Um, welcome to the final talk for lunch. Um, we have uh, Jen talking about incorporating negative connections. Thanks. Uh, so hi, uh, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk. So my name is Yu Tian. I'm part of these uh, Nordita and Wing programs. So as Sun Hu, who has just presented, and also Nico, who has presented yesterday, and uh, hopefully Henry will join us later this year. Yeah. So maybe you have heard these names so many times. Here I just show all the logos here. So that's Nordita, which is hosted by KDH and Stockholm University. And we are founded by these Wallenberg Initiative on Networks and Quantum Information. And today I will talk about uh, our work on threading and structural balance on site networks. And this is done at this transient period uh, where I finished my PhD and also moved to my postdoc at the at the end of last year. So that's a joint work with my PhD advisor, Professor No Lambiot at Oxford. So in today's talk, the plan is to start from where I become interested in sign networks. Then I will discuss in more detail of our work in sign networks with these different properties. And then if I have time, I will talk about some other topics I'm interested in. So to provide some real basis of these like sign networks, I would like to start from like my PhD program. So as you may or may not know, I'm part of a doctor training program called Industrially Focused Mathematical Modeling. So something different in our program is that our research project has an industrial partner and they will pose some real problems they would like to solve. And what we will do is to approach it mathematically. And for me, the industrial partner is Tesco. So that's a very big supermarket in the UK. And like other like ret retailers, it is characterized by a huge turnover, but relatively small margins. Then every single decision on the products might have very significant consequences on the on their sales or revenues. So one primary problem here for them is to understand the intrinsic relationship between products, including complements and uh, with, like hot dog and hot dog bun, and also substitutes like different types of berries. And what they have provided is this sales transaction data. So it's, it's like if you go to a supermarket, you will pay all your products and you have these tickets. That's what we have. And the solution we have is to like model this data as a bipartite network where we connect, consider each receipt as one type of node and products at the other, and then we connect them. If this product appear in this transaction, then we can characterize the structure by a specific connectivity pattern of these product nodes in the network. So that's a type of structural properties we are interested in. And these, the in, like the extracted relationship are important for the for the applications, like all type of here, like the like the promotion and also determine the stock level of different products. And that's all related to the demand dynamics, which we can analyze on top of these networks. So these provides the basis of like two basic problems I'm interested in. So the first problem is about structural properties, for example, to clustering the nodes in the network and then characterize the network by different spectral properties like the matrices or the graph Laplacing. And then another is about dynamical property on networks where we, base, we mainly consider linear dynamics like random walks. It also adds some nonlinear effects like the threshold effect on the network. And then if we go back to the problem, of Tesco, where there are two different relationships. One is about complement relationship, which we can consider as a positive relation between the nodes. And then the other is about substitute relationship. And then we can model it as a negative relationship between the, like between the products, which we consider as nodes. And then we actually build a site network. So that's how I become interested in site networks, but it has more general applications. So we can consider 
like friend and foe relationships in social networks, and also excitatory and inhibitory functions in biological systems, also ferromagnetic and antiferromagnetic ferromagnetic coupling in spin systems. And these all can be modeled as a sign networks where we can consider some entity as a node and then one type of relationship as positive connection and then the competing type of relationship as the negative connection. So from here, we will consider these generic sign networks and then we consider the, this unweighted version just for the ease of uh, notation later. But these can be extended to like directed networks as well. So we hope to apply, like we will, uh, we'll, I will introduce uh, properties of side networks later and we hope to apply it to some like real systems. So if you find something interesting, feel free to contact me later or after the talk. So there's one important notion in side networks, which is called structural balance, and it characterizes a relatively stable structure in side networks. So it, it is motivated by the following notion in psychology, where a friend of a friend is a friend, and an enemy of a friend is a friend. More importantly, an enemy of an enemy is a friend. So if we model it mathematically in like in graph, I'm not sure if you can see it, it, it can be modeled as no cycle with an odd number of negative edges, which defines the cycle to be negative. And later, Harry has modeled or like characterized this structure by the following structural theorem for balance. Hold it. So where we can partition the nodes into two, like two subsites, where we only have positive edges inside while negative edges between these two. And then this makes us think of a dual like structure of these where we only have negative edges inside the positive edges between these two nodes upside. And this gives us a structural antibalance where there's no cycle of an odd number of positive edges. And Harry has shown in his like for the papers where this can be characterized by partition these node subsides, partition the nodes into two subsides with only negative edges inside well positive edges outside. And these provide the basis of the classification of sign networks we would like to introduce, which is shown here. So we would like to classify all the site networks into these two, uh, into the three different types. So the first part, uh, the first one is structural balanced one, as we have seen before, and the other is structural anti-balanced one, as shown here, so negative inside, positive outside. And for all the remaining site networks, we group them together to be these strictly unbalanced site networks. Please. No partition of the nodes that can make it balanced or anti balanced, or it means for this fixed partition, it is not balanced or anti balanced. There are specific cases when these can uh, a network can belong this to, when it is bipartite or it is a tree. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. And then our our idea is to like characterize, consider each sign networks through its weight matrix which we call it w here and then we would like to connect it with the case where we ignore the sign so then we can connect with the literature of these classic networks or non-active matrices so that's the idea and then so i would like to start from these two special cases of structural balance or anti-balanced and we consider these unitary decompositions of the signed weight matrix. So we write W as these decompositions. So U lambda times U transpose, where U contains all the eigenvectors as a column. And these lambda is a diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues on the diagonal. And then we can also write uh, its decomposition of the unsigned version. So we have the bar over these W here 
and then we write it as u bar lambda bar u bar transpose and then we can show that for the structural balanced case they have the same eigenvalue and then the eigenvectors are the same apart from this actual signed pattern encoded in these i1 matrix so what our matrix is if we go back to these node bipartition of these sign networks where it is balanced so it only has positive edges inside but negative edges outside and the i1 matrix is this diagonal matrix with one if the nodes belong to one of the node subsides and minus one if it belongs to the other yeah and then for the structural anti-balance case we can show that the eigenvalues are the opposite and the eigenvectors are the same apart from these extra sign pattern encoded in this i1 matrix uh, so that's basically the same as before apart from this node bipartition now correspond to this anti-balanced structure so it has negative edges inside but positive edges between these two and uh, it is not very hard to show if we notice that for balanced network we can actually write w as i1 times w bar and then i1 so that's similar and then for anti-balanced network the opposite of the weight matrix is similar to this w bar here so that's for these two special cases and then from here we can also provide a proposition based on the parafrobinus theorem so we can characterize these leading eigenvalue so for structural balance the case we can show the lambda one which is the largest eigenvalue is actually has the largest magnitude and then the corresponding eigenvector also have similar signed patterns where it is positive in one partition while negative in the other well and then for structural antibalance case we can show that the smallest eigenvalue actually has the largest magnitude and then correspondingly the eigenvector has similar signed patterns and then this can be proved by the pair of Robinson's theorem to characterize w bar and then we can translate these like properties to w by the structural theorem we have shown before so that's about these leading eigenvalues and eigenvectors i would like to show here and then so previously we have group all the remaining sign networks together which might include a large number of sign networks and then it, it is good if we can show some common properties of these sign networks and what we have shown here is that a sign network is strictly unbalanced if and only if the what we call spectral radius which is actually the eigenvalue of the largest absolute value is smaller than its unsigned version and we can show it by so firstly one direction is relatively simple because the spectral radius will be the same if it's balanced or anti-balanced and then we show that for all strictly unbalanced case this is a case where the spectral radius is small by first showing that so in strictly unbalanced case we can actually find two walks between the same pair of nodes of the same lens but they have different sign which means there are conflicts in the sign networks and then we can translate these conflicts to the spectral radius by the definition of the matrix norm as shown here corresponding to the spectral radius so that's the structural properties i would like to introduce here and now i would like to consider some dynamics on site networks which we can like characterize by the classification we have introduced here oh good <laughs> and i would like to start from these what we call linear adjacency dynamics so in the unsigned network what we mean is that so we consider xt as a state value at time t and we consider discrete time and then at each time we update the state value by multiplying the, its previous state value by the weight matrix w here and then in the unsigned case the problem is that we have not only positive weights but also negative weights and then how should we deal with these negative weights 
So firstly, we decompose this weight matrix into its positive and negative part. So W can be written as W plus minus W minus. The negative weights are encoded in the absolute sense. So that's W. And then for the positive edges, we just maintain the same rule here. We just multiply the previous state value by the positive weights. And something different is that for negative weights, we would like to add a negative sign here, which means it just opposing it to the opposite direction. And now if we add these two together, it gives us xt, which is actually w, which is assigned weight matrix times the state value in the previous step. So that's what we mean or how we extend these linear distance dynamics to sign networks. And if we can actually write xt as wt to the power of t here. So that's the thing we would like to characterize to understand these dynamics. Okay, we start from this structurally balanced case. So as we shown before, actually xt can be written as I1 times W bar to the power of T times I1. So we know W bar is positive. So it's signed pattern is actually encoded in this I1 here. So for WT, it also has positive, uh, positive values if the corresponding like IG element is in the same node subside and negative otherwise. And then if it is not bipartite from the proposition we have shown, then the uh, the W to the power of T can be well approximated by its uh, rank one approximation with its leading eigenvalues and eigenvector here. And then it has the same sign pattern as WT here, as shown in the proposition. So that's for structural balanced case. Okay. Then for structural anti the case, also from the previous structural theorem we have shown before, we can actually write it as minus one to the power of t times i1 w bar t times i1. And this i1 now corresponds to these anti-balanced structures. So it has negative edges inside, well, positive edges between these two. So actually for WT now, it has these alternating patterns between like odd times and even times. And for even times, it will have like positive elements if they are in the same node by partition, but negative if they are between these two. Well, in the odd times, it will have the opposite. So negative if the nodes are belonging to the same node by partition a node subside and positive if they are between these two. And similar to the previous case, if the graph is now bipartite, then WT can be well approximated by its rank one approximation by its leading eigenvalue and eigenvector as shown here. And it has the same signed pattern as before because we know like they are positive. So that's for these two uh, like spatial cases here. And then for all the, yes, please. Uh, depending on T, the system will be stable or unstable, right? Um, I think the system is unstable because you have different behavior with odd and even T, because it's just changing all the time. Or do you mean the system is W to the power of T? Okay, so, so it, it oscillates. Uh -huh. Yeah, so if you understand the system as W to the power of T, it will be stable at even time and unstable at at T if there's no time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we can discuss it later maybe, yeah. So that's for these two special cases and for all the remaining sign networks. What we can say here is like, that because we know the spectral radius or the eigenvalue of the largest magnitude is smaller than unsigned case. So we can say that WT generally has smaller magnitude than this unsigned counterpart. And then to further characterize the sign networks in these like type, 
if I can call it, we further propose the following distance, like how the strictly unbalanced side networks is from being balanced or anti-balanced by comparing its like leading eigenvalues. So for this distance from being balanced, we consider this normalized weight matrix because we want to compare these eigenvalue with actual value here. So we normalize it by this d to the power of minus one. And what we call d here is the diagonal matrix where we sum all the, all the absolute value of the weights at for each node if that's just incident on this node here. So we for the distance from being balanced, we can see we compare this largest eigenvalue to one. And from being an anti-balanced, we compare the smallest eigenvalue to minus one. Yes, please. Because I don't remember what were the equation for the dynamics of the system. Was it x equals w x at time t plus one equals w x at time t? Uh-huh, yes x at time t will be w to the t times x at zero. Uh -huh, yes, yes. It was a minus one to the t. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh -huh, yes, yes. Great. And then if we look at these, like a normalized matrix in the unsigned case, it's actually related to random walks. And that's what I will discuss later in the next slides actually. So for random walks, the general idea is that, so at each time t, so that's discrete time t, and then the probability of a node going from i to j is proportional to the weights of ij over all the weights of edges that are instant on this node. And then we can also consider like a deterministic case where there are many walkers on this network and then the proportion of walkers is not random anymore from node i to j depends on these weights of ij divided by all the uh, weights of edges incident on this node and then we will consider this determinist case in this talk so Similar to the previous case, we have this weight matrix, and then we can see uh, decompose it into W plus minus W minus here. And then we will also consider the node degree here. And since no matter is positive or negative, that's we can also go through it. So we just sum over all the weights in absolute sense incident on this node. So that's what we call degree of nodes in sign networks. And then for state values, so still xt here, corresponding to these positive edges and negative edges, we also consider positive walkers and negative walkers. So xt corresponding to the density of positive walkers and x minus corresponding to these negative walk, density of negative walkers. So for and the key mechanism here is that, so if a walker goes through a negative edges, it will change to the opposite sign. So positive walkers will become negative and negative walkers will become positive if they go through a negative edges, but they will maintain their sign if they go through a positive edge. And then for the density of positive walkers on each node, it can come from two sources, either positive edges or positive nodes going through positive edges or negative nodes or negative walkers going through negative edges, should be walkers, yeah. And then for negative walkers, it can come from either positive walkers going through negative edges or negative walkers going through positive edges. So that's for these two different types. And there are different ways to combine these two walkers. And what we consider is the polarization on each node. So we uh, use the positive walkers minus the negative walkers. That's give our state value here. And actually, if we write it down, we actually go back to this WT equal to P, which is a transit, what we call signed transition matrix. And it's D to the minus one times W here times x to the at t minus one. So that's how we extend 
and the walks to signed networks. And then we will consider these transition matrix P here to characterize these signed random walks. So what we can show here, we first consider these structural balanced signed networks. What we can show here is that the signed transition matrix has eigenvalue one if and only if the graph is balanced. And it's not really hard to see if we consider our previous structural theorem and we also note by also noting that the sign transition matrix is similar to a symmetrically normalized uh, weight matrix if we time the to the like power of half both sides and then we can show the largest eigenvalue of these symmetric versions won by the structural theorem before and please, yeah. And what are the dynamical implications of having the eigenvalue to one? Um, yeah, you will see here, because now we can get the stationary state here, because it's just one, and then we get it from the leading eigenvector, which is multiply one, 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 one every time, yeah. And then because we, we have also shown the leading eigenvector before, and now we can get the stationary state of these uh, signed random walks here, as shown here, uh, these X star here. Yes, please. Then, then eigenvalue one means you are stationary. Mm, yes. Mm -hmm. Like your evolution over time is something like one minus the eigenvalue, depends on one minus it. Your evolution at time is time p. No, yeah, it's like you approach the stationary state over time. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, but okay, again, value one will mean one to the t. Yeah. Okay, yeah. This is great. Okay, sorry. No, no. No worries. Yeah, great will be the stationer. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now it goes to zero over time, yeah. Great. So if the graph is now bipartite and it's balanced, we can show its steady state here in this X star here. So still this I1 is a diagonal matrix corresponding to the sign pattern before, so that's positive. So this partition is positive inside, negative outside, and I1 is positive if, if the nodes corresponding to the nodes in one node subside, and minus one if it's corresponding to V2 here. So actually, the something different in sign networks is in these brackets here, because if we remove it, we go goes back to the steady state of uh, like random walks with, without any sign. So now it depends on the initial like state value x0 here, and then how it spreads over these two node subsets. So that's something different in sign networks. Good. And then for structural anti-balanced sign networks, Following a similar procedure, we can show that the sign transition matrix has eigenvalue minus one, and if and only if the graph is anti-balanced. And then we can expect that its steady state will alternate between odd and even times, where uh, I show here as x star O for odd times and x star E for the even times. And for the stationary state in even times, that's just looks the same as before, uh, apart from this I1 matrix now corresponds to this anti-balanced partition. So that's negative inside or positive outside. And for these odd times, it will be the opposite because you multiply minus one at, it, that, at, at this time. And so something else with signs is that now the steady state can depend on time or there's no steady steady state in general. Yeah, and then for these strictly unbalanced sign networks, so now we can have some better results actually. So first we can show that, this, that these spectral radius of the signed 
transition matrix is smaller than one. And that's the only case in the strictly unbalanced side networks. Now we can actually show that the steady state is zero in this case, because that's minus, uh, smaller than one. And so this actually gives us a steady state in this case. And how to understand this steady state being zero, we can consider this signed random walk as a very simple opening dynamics. And positive walkers correspond to op a positive that a positive opinion and negative walkers corresponding to negative opinion. So no matter where you start, you will end up with everyone has new opinion on this issue here. So that's for strictly unbalanced sign networks. And if we recall the distance we have like considered before, they actually considered. Um, so this actually gives us the eigenvalue of the signed transition matrix in the balanced case, which is one, and the uh, smallest eigenvalue of, of the signed transition matrix in the anti-balanced case, which is minus one. So we are really comparing these eigenvalues. And also we can show that this value is proportional to the number of edges disturbing the corresponding structure by perturbation analysis. So that's a, uh, oh, that's a, uh, random walks I would like to consider here and uh, some point or one point I would like to make here is that uh, these type of analysis can also be extended to some other nonlinear dynamics if that's highly dependent on the weight matrix for example we can add some threshold effect to the to these dynamics and then we will have similar results so like um, it will be stationary in the balanced case and um, like highly alternating the signs in the anti-balanced case and smaller magnitude in the strictly unbalanced case. Yes, and now I will show some experimental results. So here we consider uh, these following four types of sign networks that are generated uh, from a warrant of stochastic block model. So now we have 16 nodes where the first six nodes like compose the first node by, part by partition or node subside and the remaining 10 construct the like the other node subside and then we play randomly placing edges in this within the node subside and between these two with some probabilities and then for this structural balanced configuration, we only allow positive edges within this no subside, but negative edges between these two. And for the strictly structurally anti-balanced case, we only allow negative edges inside, but positive edges between these two. And for this strictly unbalanced case, which is close to being um, like balanced or anti-balanced, we, we just randomly flip a few edges inside or outside. So that's the network we have, and now we can like run the dynamics we have considered before on these four different types of network to see how they like different and also connect with each other. Yeah, and now I show the like the evolution of the state value over time. I'm not sure you can see it, but the x-axis is a node label, so that's 0 up to 15 here. And the y-axis is the state value, so that's the xit here. And the different colors corresponding to different time steps. So from blue up to purple, that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 here. And then, yes, so that's for the linear adjacency dynamics before. So like at each time step, we multiply the weight matrix. And then for the structural balance the case, we can see that it almost always maintains the sign over time. And then it's like changes gradually. And then the structural unbalanced case, which is close to being balanced, it has very similar like change over time. Well, for the structural anti-balanced case, it alternates the sign over time. So that's from blue to orange, uh, like green, red, purple here, so just alternate over time. And for the structural unbalanced case, it has very similar shape to the like this anti-balanced case, but it has some smaller magnitude over time, as shown here. Yes. 
So that's for this linear GCC dynamics. And the trend is more like it's clearer if we look at the signed random walks. Because for this structural balance the case, again, it maintains the sign over time and it approaches the stationary state over time. So that's from 0, 5, 10, 15, and 20 for different colors. So it has larger time scale here. And then for this strictly unbalanced case, even though it has like similar shape over time, but it approaches zero as we have seen before. And for this structural empty balanced case, it like alternates over time. So uh, like from odd and even times, because that's not continuous here. So that's from blue, orange, green, red, purple, and just alternates the sign. And then for the structural strictly unbalanced case, which is close to being balanced, it has similar shape and sign change, but it approaches zero over time. So that's consistent with what we have shown before. So up to now, I would like to conclude this part. So. In, in my talk, I have introduced the structural properties of sign networks where we have introduced this classification based on structural balance and for the characterization based on this classification of sign networks. Now, I have also shown some dynamical properties of sign networks, which can like, like characterize each type in the previous case. And as some further directions, we would like to find some applications of our analysis to various fields, especially biology, if you are interested. And also, if we look at the graph theory part behind it, these two structural balance and anti-balance case actually only compose two switching equivalent classes. So it would be interesting to consider more switching equivalent classes in this relatively big, strictly unbalanced case, and then provide finer characterizations. So this work is mostly here in this archive. So if you are interested, please feel free to check it online. I guess I have some time so I can move on to some other topics that I'm interested in here. So I have a long lasting love for community detection on networks. So yeah um so for community detection the most general case is like you can group together nodes that are relati relatively densely connected with each other well uh, inside the community well relatively loosely connected between the communities so classic way is that you consider some objective functions that can characterize these quality of the communities you have detected and then you would like to optimize these objective functions so as to find a good community and the uh, classic one is the modularity and then you would like to um, maximize this modularity function here and recently there are some like objective functions based on this curvature like change a uh, curvature of edges or like iterating over time and this can also develop some community detection methods that's one of my recent work and also apart from this classic notion there are some general notion of communities so we are not only interested of the nodes that are densely connected inside or loosely connected outside, it can has more variance of the connectivity patterns. So for example, the dual case is like you are relatively loosely connected inside, but densely connected outside. And that's what we call row extraction on networks. So for example, I have discussed these uh, complements and substitutes before, and then we can characterize complements as this node subset, these two nodes that are always in the same basket, so they always share the same neighbors. Well, for substitutes, they do not share the same neighbors, but they share, they are always both with the same products, which means they have the same neighbors of neighbors or positive neighbors. So that's a variance of the connective patterns, and I'm interested in. Uh, also, I'm generally interested in mathematical modeling, and one is to model in the dynamics of slime modes. So if you recall this YouTube where you put different food resources at different locations, and the slime modes can find the paths to these, like between these food sources. So that's very interesting, and I'm doing it now. I'm also doing it now, yeah. Um, 
Then back to the topics of our program. So that's networks and quantum information. So of course, I'm interested in quantum, some quantum aspects of networks. So it depends on how you define the nodes, you can build different quantum networks. So if it, it can consider qubits as nodes or different states as nodes, and then we can analyze the properties of these quantum networks. Yes, yeah, so that, that's all I would like to discuss today. So thanks for listening. I'm happy to take any questions. Um, nice. So, what is the? I mean, if I just have a randomly generated signed network, I mean, let's say I have some Erdos Schmelly model. Mm -hmm. It's going to be structurally balanced or unbalanced. Is is it? Is it just zero probability or? <laughs> I think that's also the research question, like how you generate sign networks randomly. Because if you like place sign randomly, it's really hard to say. Yeah. Because you may want some random balanced networks or random anti balanced networks or random strictly balanced and unbalanced networks. Normally, people just now do like randomly sign networks because that would be so random. He's asking, like, if you have any intuition as to, you know, if you did an Erdős Renyi random sign network, would mm -hmm. fall into? Do you have any intuition about that? I think so. If we can consider these, mm -hmm. it's hard to say because if you like flip the edges, maybe you can find other configurations that's balanced. So we may want to do some finer calculation here to to provide an answer. Yeah. Uh, random Erdos Reni network with random signs, uh, yeah. uh, it's unlikely that it will produce one of the structures you showed. Mm, yeah, intuitively, yes. <coughs> Certain sign of connections and. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Sure. Zero probability if you draw. It could be, yeah. If the if the network is very small, I guess we can get some balanced network at least. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thanks. I know. Non-biological <laughs> systems like the brain, for example. Uh, uh, nodes tend to be only excitatory or only inhibitory. So if you have an excitatory neuron on the way, uh, outgoing weights will be positive. Mm -hmm. So uh, is, is, is there any way to construct this kind of sign networks uh, in, in, in this case? Uh, will this like additional constraint help or just make it even more difficult to find this, this kind of, uh, of topology? I think that's also the question I'm wondering now, because in biological or neural networks, the links from these excitatory neurons are so positive, and then the links from the inhibitory neurons are no negative. So it naturally, for the edges between excitatory and inhibitory neurons, that's positive one way and negative the other way. So it naturally falls into the strictly unbalanced case. So the only thing I know here is that the spectral radius will be smaller. And then to provide final characterization, I think we need some final thinking here to really like characterize more, I think, yeah. Thanks. Uh, directed network. Yeah, 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 but I think this. I mean, you're, yeah, you, it's not a normal network. You cannot decompose it with, in this, uh, with this uh, orthogonal or. Uh, I think directed networks can also be normal, but it's also a special case. Normal is like U A transpose A. Um, if that's real, yeah, yeah, that's special. So, yeah. So in terms of decomposition, we can always consider this singular value decomposition, but that's not very helpful if we consider W to the power of T because you cannot like, like yeah. That's a difference. Yes. Network, not not the special normal case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. How to interpret your network with the positive and negative walkers? Mm -hmm. To talk about a random walk. Mm -hmm. 
you have the probability of the worker. Yeah, that's why I'm curious. <laughs> Random. Really not a probability because it doesn't add to one. It mm -hmm. shows stationary states that go to zero. Mm -hmm. Not a probability. So, so how else could I interpret the 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 your state variable? You you talk about opinions that seem. Uh -huh. Zero, which is a neutral opinion. Yes, I think one way to maintain the probability distribution is to not consider these uh, like sum or I think I use minus here, minus of these two state values. But you consider like positive walkers here, negative walkers here. You construct a long, like longer state, uh, if we call state vector here, and then it will be a probability just can start a uh, consider a larger network but if we consider these am i clear or i'm confusing you or okay i will i'll keep it later and then for these opinion dynamics if you consider these so we consider discrete opinion because we have like one walkers two walkers three walkers, and then it corresponds to different levels of like confidence or inconfidence of these issues. And then you can propagate through the network, like some positive opinions you just pass to your friends and some positive opinions you pass to your enemy, your enemy just this, don't believe you. And it turns to a negative one, if that's easier to understand. Uh, what what is the node is the node uh, uh it's like people a node is a person mm -hmm. okay so yes. since they have a certain opinion on a topic mm -hmm. they are connected to friends, yeah friends, social networks yes person yeah it's a, a person mm -hmm. yes great great no worries any more questions? Yeah. Then let's let's speak again. Thanks.